I created a, a website on WordPress.com, and it's the lonhosser.wordpress.com. Actually, I already got somebody signed up on it. It's really, we're just running some tests here, so it's kind of funny. Uh, some people have linked to me on there. And uh, then uh, also we have one running on a actual server, uh, kwizq.org, that I set up so we can see it on a live running basis. So let's uh, I'm just focus on this one first because I'm more familiar with this than on the actual WordPress.com site. And so I'm going to go into the dashboard. And you remember that if you're logged in, you get a panel that runs across the top that you can switch between a view of the site running and a view of the actual administrative panel. And we'll go down to users and take a look at all users. So I have been playing with this a little bit today just to get some uh, feel for the things we'll talk about. And there's always one user called administrator. And that is configurable to remove on your own hosted version. But it, when you go to WordPress.com, the original administrator is fixed in place. And so that's administrator has all these users have roles you can see them over here in this column and the administrator is the powerful super user of the actual wordpress site and they can do pretty much anything that they like to do then you can create additional uh, users and give them different kinds of roles depending on what you want them to actually do and actually can change their roles as you uh, go along so let's take a look at um, Let's see. And then we're just going to go over and get uh, the user roles because that's probably what you're going to be more interested in about. And so if we take a look at this is a WordPress.org site, and they have a, a page. This is a link from our page on our website, and it's giving you a description of what roles and capabilities are. Let me just scroll this up briefly. And you can see there's a different kinds of roles. There's a super admin role. There's an administrator role. There's an editor role, author, contributor, and subscriber. And so an editor is a, a role that you could assign to somebody who can actually be like the manager of editing, so to speak. They can edit all everybody's posts and take care of them. Uh, whereas the author and contributor role narrow it down a little bit. The author can publish and manage their own posts. So they're pretty much to write anything they want and publish it immediately. And then the contributor, they're a little more restricted than the author. They can write posts, but there will be a review step where someone has to moderate and approve it. And then a subscriber uh, can only manage their profile. Apparently, they're really just visitors to your website. So uh, you can set up to allow people to subscribe to your website. And that does open the door for a lot of visitors that are spamming you. So you need to consider how that's done. There's some different ways that's handled on WordPress.com. They encourage subscribers. But there they have a little more control because they usually require everybody to be a member of WordPress.com. Whereas in your open site where you're running it yourself, uh, you have to be a little bit more careful about how you control spam and who uh, posts things. And there, and there are ways of doing that. So don't get too worried about it, but it's just the, the lowest level, you can open up subscribers. Right. So, uh, and then go into more detail down here on the wordpress.org right into the actual functions that each one of these has. So you give me a minute to scroll down here to the bottom of this particular link. It's gives you a good overview of the different roles and what they can do uh, with this graph. And so across the top, it has the roles and then items that they can do. For example, manage the site and manage network themes. Uh, Super admin really has to do with a, a multi-user site. So administrator is really what you're going to have as someone who's downloaded WordPress as a single WordPress site. You don't have super admin in that case. So if you look at uh, administrator, you could do things like delete users, which would you think would be something you can do with export and import things. And you have a quite a, a long list of items that 
are pretty much restricted to an administrator. Then the editor comes in, and you can see they can actually approve comments from subscribers. They can manage some uh, items. We're going to talk about categories, edit other people's pages, edit publish pages, publish pages. So if a contributor writes a page, theoretically the editor. You think of it like a newspaper editor. They're they're the top uh, writer at the um, at the uh, at the WordPress site. And keep in mind, you can have more than one user with these roles. So you can have more than one editor theoretically. And so you can scroll down all the way to the bottom. You can see the lonely subscriber down here. Uh, pretty much all they can do is read. And right, so that's what they're limited to do. Um, I thought they could also post comments, but maybe it's just not in this list. All right, so that gives you a little idea of the roles. And let's take a look at what WordPress.com tells us about these. So WordPress.com gives you, again, the capability of creating user roles. And you will have to go to the actual administration panel for this. We'll see those in a second. Uh, well, actually, we did look at one. We'll look at the one for WordPress.com well. And next, it's the same information formatted in a different way, more readable, less technically oriented. And they also have a role called followers and viewer. And so followers, I already have, that's what I was saying when we got started, I already have a follower. I did, didn't do anything, they're already following me. They don't realize it's just a test WordPress site, but apparently whatever I post, it was interesting. And so my comes my blog is public. And then I can also invite people uh, to be followers. And generally they're gonna be able to sign up with a WordPress.com account. And we have what we call viewers, they're like followers, but they don't have any editing privileges and they can read. Uh, private sites. So there is a difference between public and private sites on WordPress.com so that you can actually have a site that's limited to uh, people that you invited to visit. So we're not going to go into that detail. We're going to assume everything's public. All right, so then there's descriptions on how to do the actual process, and you can learn those as you go. So I'm going to go over to the where we actually can see that live. So here I created a, uh, a two users, and I just gave them an arbitrary name. Uh, my initials ALH and then author and contributor. And actually, I changed the author to a contributor. I was playing back and forth to see what it would do to their posts once they made them. So, for example, uh, we can actually go in and edit. Since I'm now logged in as the administrator. And these are the things that are available to the actual person who is uh, who's signed in. They'll see the same thing. Name is fixed in place. Uh, since I'm the administrator, I could change their role at this point. And they can change their name, their nickname. Uh, they can just, if they want to display their name on their post, an email account, they can put a little description. So actually, when you're in WordPress and when the, the uh, user writes some, a post or a page, their name is there, and they, you can click on their name, and this is the information that they will see. And of course, you put a password in or update the password. So if I wanted to add a new user, I just hit Add New, and then I have to come up with a new user, ALH, and I'll just call this uh, Editor. And then I have to have an email account. Now, it's going to restrict you to only one user per email account. So I think I might have run out of them at this point. Uh, let me think of one I might not have used. Um, I don't think I used this one. All right, and then you come up with the user's name. I'll just do ALH again, and I'll just call the last name editor. And then the user can put in some descriptive information. Then you come up with a password, or you can generate uh, a password um, or Actually, there's not a generation of password on this screen. It's on the edit screen. So in which case, I would put in a password, and then they're in. That's all there is to it. Once they're done with this, they'll be in. And you can send the password as plain text, if you like, when it goes out with the email. So if you're setting the user up for that, you have some way to tell them what the password is. Either call them on the phone, uh, send them a private email, or you can just use it right here. Otherwise, the password is going to be in your notes and not theirs. And then you set the role for them this person will be an editor. 
So we create a password in here, and I created some some with real simple passwords. And you can see it's telling me that's really a weak password. And we add the user. Let's see what else is down here. That's it. Add the user. Now, if I go to that email account, I will have an email telling me the password so I can sign in as this particular user. And these are my restrictions uh, according to this role. So we go over to WordPress.com, and I have the administrator page open here. So we're now actually WordPress.com versus uh, a hosted WordPress site. And again, this is not this is the free version, so it, there may be some differences. I really wasn't in the mood of paying for a service just to see what differences there might be on the menus. But I'm assuming uh, here we go to users. And there is some differences here. So the first thing is if we, it, there's not an add a new, there's invite a new. It's already invited one. So they get an invitation and then they have to reply back. So we'll just uh, invite new so you can see. And that's basically how that kind of works. And then you give them a role when you invite them. And then you send this to someone. Let me think, uh, I guess I could use the same one. Let's see, usernames or email addresses. So again, I'm just going to put in here uh, and uh, a message in here. I am inviting you to be my editor. And then I'll send the invitation. So they're not in. Let's see, uh, WordPress.com, username. Oh, okay. So, uh, this is an invalid email address. All right. Notice they also could be a WordPress.com username if you'd like to invite somebody who's already a WordPress user. So I would think that if you're setting this up for a group, small group that wants to actually maintain it on WordPress.com, I think everybody should actually get a WordPress.com account. And I think that'll make it easier for everybody and give you a little more confidence over uh, using it rather than using the private ones. Although you can, it's really up to you. So at this point, an email goes out and then that Gmail account will have to be opened and click through to re refinish. And like a lot of these notification setups, the user may not get it or it might go into spam. They call you on the phone. They didn't get this. You can hit a resend here and go. So I didn't finish any of these. I really didn't want to go through the process of finishing the, the setup for that. So it gives you a little idea over the, the user roles and, and the, uh, for editing particularly. So that depends on what you need, how you're going to set that up. So you have the ability to have the editor, which is going to be a just like a newspaper editor. They're pretty much in charge of the editing process and they can do pretty much anything has to do with posting. You don't have to worry about them updating your plugins or changing the theme or doing anything that uh, is restricted to the administrator. Then if you want, you can create an author. They're a somewhat an ability to publish on their own and then a contributor who can write and manage their own posts. However, they will have to be moderated when they actually do that. So we'll see that in a second. We have a couple contributors set up. And so the contributor does have uh, the ability to edit their own post. And I think, um, but at that point, they're, they're stuck as updating. So what I would say is the contributor is a good place to start somebody who's new to WordPress and not certain about all the editing features. So this way they can get their posts done. And then when they hit uh, this button to say that they want to publish it, it will go into a waiting mode, and then the moderator can look it over, which could be an author or an editor, actually just an editor or administrator, and they can then correct or make any changes and then decide whether or not they want the user, the contributor, to fix that and or publish it themselves.